you know, we hear from the witnesses, um, but the FBI isn't interviewing them and isn't giving us any facts. So all we have— You're interviewing me. Say, you're interviewing me. You're, you're doing it, Senator. I'm sorry to interrupt, but you're well, doing it. That's the, the, there's no conclusions reached. That was Brett Kavanaugh responding to Senator Dianne Feinstein in California today's hearing. We spoke with retired Harvard professor Alan Dershowitz ahead of today's hearing. Now that it's over, what did he think of the outcome? Professor Dershowitz, also, of course, the author of the best-selling The Case Against Impeaching Trump, and he rejoins us tonight. Professor, thanks a lot for coming on. You watched the hearing um, from beginning to end. What's your assessment? Well, when I watched her, I really thought she was extremely credible, and I had grave doubts as to whether he could win the credibility contest. But yes. then he made this remarkable comeback, and he really testified in a completely compelling uh, manner. So I think in the end, there is a tie when it comes to personal credibility. So how do you break the tie? Yes. I think one way is to look for corroboration. And he has much more corroboration on his side. Now, the best way to make sure that corroboration is accurate is for the committee to call the other witnesses and let the FBI continue its background check. And I think in the end, it will do him more good than harm. Now, when we spoke yesterday, you said that you were concerned about the choice of Rachel Mitchell from the Maricopa County Sex Crimes right. Investigations Office in Arizona to speak on behalf of Republican senators as they questioned Christine Ford. And your point was, well, I think we have a clip. I'll show you your point. Sure. To see the greatest engine of truth ever invented used effectively, namely cross-examination. And I'm worried that we don't have the right people. Uh, the woman who has been hired to conduct the cross-examination has probably rarely ever cross-examined anybody. She's a prosecutor. So I don't think she's the right person to question uh, Dr. Ford. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I was right. criticized very much for making that point, and I turned out to be 100 percent right. She was totally and completely incompetent in terms of asking cross-examination questions, because she has little experience. For right. example, the main issue now is whether or not she recognized Kavanaugh correctly. She was never asked whether how well she knew him, how many times she encountered him before this, how close was their relationship. There was nothing that could raise questions about whether, even if she believes she's telling the truth, she may have misidentified. So she just did a terrible job. And I think the Republicans realize that. And they canned her right in the middle, but it was a very bad choice. So can I, and I, those of us who ask questions for a living sat and watched with our mouths open, wondering throughout, what is the point of this? Not that she's a bad person or stupid, but no. you would think, I mean, you've been around congressional testimony before, you've been, uh, you've testified. When you are asking questions of a witness, aren't you doing so in order to prove a point, tell a story? You're doing so for some reason, aren't you? You have to have a theory. Every question exactly. has to be part of a tactic. You ask question A in order to lay a foundation for B. She was just asking questions. It just didn't seem to go anywhere. She didn't have much of a point. And in the end, she accomplished nothing. Yes. Brett Kavanaugh defended himself. Nobody else was, other than Lindsey Graham. Thank you. Uh, professor, it's great to see you. And I, I just wanted to let our viewers know what a prescient prediction you made. Uh -huh. that, that's let for the sure. truth come out. That's Amen. what we're all interested in. Thank, Thank you, you, Professor.